what is going on gang it's your boy marcus washington and you're on the mark where we talk everything falcons football what it do family what it do what it do what it do so i'm gonna keep this brief i know my last uh couple of videos have ran over two hours long forgive me for that i'm gonna try and keep this under an hour y'all remember me saying this so an hour from now when i jump off here i'm jumping off here um but i had a a pretty interesting conversation um with my father of all folks um about my team now my father doesn't understand why i'm a falcons fan just doesn't get it man your team sucks your team's always losing da 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 but even my father has started asking me about the Falcons because of the moves that we've made in the offseason already mind you we're still the draft is weeks away so I know if my father I know if my father's coming to me asking me what's going on with your team fam I had to hear our team is trash for some for some decades but now it's what's all this hoopla going on about your team man who did y'all sign i'm like we signed kirk cousins oh oh maybe y'all want to do something this year so we're having this conversation and i'm thinking to myself my father is in his 60s closer to 70 than 60 um and it got me to thinking about arthur blank you know, Arthur Blank is a relative. He's what we call old <laughs> in any generation, right? I don't care what generation you're in. Arthur Blank is old. And I think last year pushed him over the edge. I think last year really pushed him over the edge where you got a team, you got a good roster. You got salary cap space, you got draft capital, you got all this stuff, and the the basement is 10 wins. It's like this team, with the way this team is constructed, there's no way you can't win 10. And then we win seven. I think Blank snapped after that. Because, I, I mean, we knew Arthur Smith was, was gone. Now Desmond Ritter is gone. And the money that Atlanta was willing to throw at Kirk Cousins with an Achilles tear. They let go of some guys. Cordell Patterson. Now he's with the Steelers with Arthur Smith. Surprise, surprise. I hope I hope Cordell gets some get some good quality minutes up in Pittsburgh. But look at what this team is. This team is showing you. They're not playing around. They didn't do, they didn't make these moves just to be relevant. They didn't make these moves to win 10 games. Because we should have won 10 games last year. And mind you, Tampa Bay got into the playoffs with nine wins. I'm gonna let y'all sit on that for a minute. Our basement last year was 10 wins. That was the expectation. Our expectation was more than Tampa Bay's total wins last year. That's why I cannot comprehend. When folks tell you the NFC is between Tampa Bay and Atlanta. Really? Tampa signed Mike Evans to a, a well-deserved contract signed Baker Mayfield to a contract nobody else was going to give him those guys were they they were there last year and they won nine games Mike Evans potential was unleashed last year he he, re, he caught for a thousand yards again surprise surprise we got two guys on our receiving core we ain't unlocked yet added another guy 
whose potential is through the roof. And then got a quarterback who is all world in the regular season. How is Tampa Bay competing with us? I want a Tampa Bay fan to tell me how y'all got the same team that you got last year and you won nine, you won nine games. We beat y'all last year with the team we got with a quagmire quarterback. So with the media talking about us, there is a level of disrespect that's being thrown our way. Ah, you know, Kirk Cousins, he's he's one of four in the playoffs. He's one of four. He he chokes. He chokes when the lights come on. When, when's the last time he won a, a primetime game last year against San Francisco with no Justin Jefferson? Here's why I'm telling people, Atlanta going deep in the playoffs is not unfathomable. It's not it's it's not one of these things where you like, no, nah, I don't see that happening. I'll give you the reason why. San Francisco was the creme de la creme of the NFC last year. I don't think anybody will argue that. They had a run of like three or four games when Debo Samuels was gone. He was injured. They lost every single one of them. Green Bay should have beat them in the playoffs. And Detroit had a 27-7 lead on them boys in the championship game. That was the creme de la creme of the NFC. Now, look at Green Bay's roster and look at Detroit's roster and then look at our roster with Kirk Cousins. You mean to tell me we can't go toe-to-toe with San Francisco? Green Bay should have won that game. And the average age on Green Bay is like 24 years. And mind you, the guy who literally was the catalyst for them winning their playoff game in Green Bay is now gone. That was Aaron Jones. So I'm like, why do to me that's an insult? Oh, they'll make the playoffs. I mean, they'll make the playoffs, but that that's it. They're, you know, they're a wild card and they'll probably get put out in the first round. I look at it from a different perspective. Not only do I think that we're going to make the playoffs, I think we're going to the NFC Championship game. Furthermore, I think Atlanta has a good chance of taking the NFC. If 10 wins is our basement, I don't care where you hear it from. Most people expect Atlanta to win 10 games next year. We don't even know what the schedule is. But they like they win in 10 games next year. That's the basement. There's only 17 games in the regular season. The basement is 10. Atlanta could easily win over 10 games. So you're looking at maybe a one or two seed in the NFC. Oh, Jay Land, let me get to some of these comments. Jay Land says, uh, we do know the... Um, uh, hold on, hold on. Let me get to some of these comments. Jay, uh, Jay Land, uh, hold on. Let me get to your comment. Your comment disappeared, fam. Um, we do know the schedule. We just don't know the dates and the times. Well, that dates and times definitely matter. Whether you're playing, you know, I, I'm pretty sure we're going to get some prime time games because we do have Kirk Cousins. Um, but fam, we're, we're winning more than 10 games. San Francisco was the number one seed with 12 wins. 
and they were the creme de la creme last year. So can the Falcons win inside of two years? Yes. The short answer is yes. Because with all the acquisitions in the NFC, I'm I'm impressed by a couple of teams. I think Atlanta could beat every single one of those teams. Man, we weren't really getting blown out last year. We had terrible, absolutely terrible quarterback play. Terrible. And we should have still won 10 games, bruh. So for me, I said we the basement is 10. Man, I'm Negro Domus is calling this out. I think Atlanta wins 13 games. Regular season, they win 13. One of the reasons why I believe this is I already see where this offense is going. I already know how they're going to run this offense. A lot of motion. Mooney is probably going to be the main guy in motion. But you're going to see motion from Kyle Pitts. You're going to see motion from Drake London. You're going to see motion from Bijan coming out of the backfield. And you've got a quarterback you can plug and play literally day one. You don't got to, you don't really got to change none of the verbiage. These guys come up from, come up under the Sean McVay tree. Here's the interesting part about Sean McVay. Before Sean McVay became the head coach of the Los Angeles Rams. Y'all remember who the head coach was before him? Got fired after he signed a two-year extension back in 2016. Guy by the name of Jeff Fisher. I don't understand why he got that two-year extension, but there was a team that beat them so bad they fired Jeff Fisher that following Monday. Y'all care to y'all do y'all care to know what team that was that beat them so badly that they fired a guy they had just given a two-year extension to weeks earlier. That would be us, fam. That would be the Falcons. Then they had an interim head coach for the rest of the season. Then they hired Sean McVay. I don't believe in coincidences, family. I don't. And I still think the football gods owe us a damn Super Bowl. So when I see the pieces falling into place, Raheem Morris getting hired, him bringing his pals over from the Rams, us keeping Jerry Gray, them going all out to pay Kirk Cousins no matter what the cost. This ain't a team that's telling you, we just want to make it to the wild card, man. No, this is a team that sees a window and sees an opportunity and says, you know what? We're a quarterback away from really breaking this thing wide the fuck open. That's why I feel like some of these comments made by the media are low-key disrespectful at this point. You got Detroit there. Detroit might be broken, though. And we saw what Detroit did in the championship game. We saw how they malfunctioned in the second half. Green Bay, I'm not so sure 
Josh Jacobs can do what Aaron Jones did in that playoff game. Chicago needs a quarterback. Minnesota, they need a quarterback. So, when I'm looking at these teams we're supposed to be intimidated by, Dallas, we know what Dallas going to do. Dallas going to fold. What other team in the NFC do you look at and like, ooh, I'm scared. If you if you win the NFC, you got two home games and a in a bye. You win one of those playoff games, you're in the NFC championship game. How is that so hard to imagine Atlanta could be that team? It's not hard to believe at all. Matter of fact, it's very believable. Our division. I'm chalking that up as a dub because all Tampa can do on their best day is win nine games. They showed you that last year on their best day. They can only win nine. Our ceiling or our, not our ceiling, but our basement is 10. I don't see nobody talking about Tampa going to win 10 games this year. Nobody. And they just signed Baker Mayfield to a $100 million contract. That man got a $100 million piece. A $100 mil piece. And everybody's like, eh, when it comes to Tampa Bay. Mike Evans got paid. They're like, eh. But they looking at Atlanta, they like, man, minimum I see him winning 10 games. How is this even close? So I'm jumping off the porch tonight. 13 wins. I'm off the porch. And I'm talking about I'm leapfrogging off the porch. There's some people, there's there's some fans that are still sitting on the porch. Hey, I get you. I understand you. I ain't even mad at you. I'm jumping my ass off the porch. 13 wins. That gets you the number one or the number two seed. Definitely gives you the NFC South. So that's one playoff home game that you're playing. Now that's barring everybody staying healthy. Hold on for a second, fam. I'm back. My fault. I'm back. So I know there'll be a lot of people that have uh, that are that are going to have an issue with this. Well, you know, Mark, how do you go from seven games uh, for the last three years to 13? Man, that's almost, you know, double what y'all have won the last three years. Well, my argument is this. In the three years, we could have easily won 10 games all three seasons, including Matt Ryan's last season here. We had seven wins. We were 0 for 8 when we had an opportunity to win the game. Game Game-winning drives, we were 0 for 8. You win three of those games, that's 10 wins right there. Go back and look at it. Marcus Mariota. We let a lot of those games slip. And then last year, we y'all definitely know what happened last year. You can blame it on the quarterback. Okay. You can blame it on the head coach, who was also our offensive coordinator. Okay. Fact still remains. In all three years, Atlanta 
could have won 10 games. This isn't a jet situation where the jets were just horrible. Last year, a lot of the games that we lost, we were in the Minnesota loss. We were in that game. So even with the terrible quarterback play, we still had opportunities to win the game. The Carolina game, do I need to remind y'all? Do I need to remind y'all? So when I look at what we have now, we have a quarterback, no matter how you feel about him. The one thing is for absolute sure. Her Cousins is an absolute dog in the regular season. The boy, the boy is going to get it to the playmakers, which means we're about to see Kyle Pitts unlocked, Drake London unlocked. We're about to see that. And Mooney, Mooney is the dark horse here. To me, Mooney is what Puka Nakua is to the Rams. But the one thing I love about this team, you can't put eight in the box. Martavius, man, what's going on with you, fam? Laid up in the hospital listening to the show. Hey, man, I appreciate you rocking with your boy in the hospital, man. Get well soon, family. And when I mean soon, like tonight, get well soon, fam. But yeah, so for me, yeah, I'm optimistic. I've always been optimistic, man. But this year, the the last time I remember being this optimistic was 2015. Now, y'all remember Kyle Shanahan's first year here. There was a lot of clashing of heads when it came to the offense. Our defense, our, our offense was 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 semi decent that year. It was decent that year. Defense, eh. But 2016 was just. And I, I look at the the re the re renewed energy when it comes to this fan base, the renewed energy when it comes to the club, and even with the media. Fam, I, I haven't heard this much conversation about the Falcons since 2016. We're everywhere, bro. That's what signing a guy like Kirk will do to you. But also, when you go all in, when you go all in on a guy like that, you're indicating to the whole world, man, we're not we're not fucking around no more, man. Listen, we know our quarterback position has been ass cheeks for the last three years. We we know it. We know it's been ass cheeks. So what we're going to do, we're going to pay this boy 180, 180 million over four years. Last two years, though, we straight. That's why I say inside of two years. I think Atlanta going to the NFC Championship game this year. Ain't none of these teams in it. Man, fam, matter of fact, let me do this. None of these teams, none of them, none of them intimidate me. There isn't a team in the NFC, and I'm like, Ugh. ah, bro, I don't, I don't know about that, man. I, I, I don't know if we can beat them, man. Like that, that team is, man. That I, I, I don't, I don't know, man. No team at all. I think Atlanta can beat any one of these teams. Look at the Cowboys. I think Atlanta can beat the Cowboys. The Cowboys have beat themselves. Let's just be honest with that. The Cowboys are gonna Cowboy. We know this. They gonna Cowboy. So the Giants? No, no, not, not, not intimidated by the Giants at all. Sorry, not. The Eagles? They got Saquon. They're gonna be a better. They're gonna be a better team as far as running the ball, but something was off about Philly last year. 
Y'all remember all those games they kept winning, but they could have easily lost all those games. And then they started to lose all those games and limped into the playoffs and lost in the first round. Just saying. And there's no guarantee that Saquon Barkley is going to be healthy for the whole year. Saquon could go out very early in the season and he's out for the he's out for the whole season. That is very much a possibility. I don't wish that on that young man at all. But looking at his track record, that is very much a possibility. The Commanders, forget about it. Stop. No. And we move on to Chicago. Chicago's made a couple of good moves. I like what I've seen Chicago do. I don't think a rookie quarterback can come in and take them to the promised land in year one. So, no, not intimidated by them, too. The Lions, definitely not intimidated by them. That's one of the games we should have fucking won. And let the game get beside us. This is with Desmond Ritter. We should have won that game. So, no, not int- especially after what their coach said after they lost to the 49ers. Hey, guys, this might be our only shot. As a coach, you don't tell that to your damn players. So the coach is telling me that, hey, this might have been a Cinderella year for us. It probably won't happen again. The Packers, again, I like what the Packers are doing, man. I think they too damn young, though. And them getting getting off of Aaron Jones for Josh Jacobs, that to me was a no-no. I watched Josh Jacobs play. I had Josh Jacobs on my fantasy last year. Boy, with some cheeks. I'm talking some straight up BBL cheeks, bruh. I had to put Josh Jacobs on the bench because he was playing awful. So I'm not intimidated by them, too. They're too young, and I do not trust Josh Jacobs as their as their premier running back. The Vikings, Vikings went and did some good things. But their question mark is Sam Darnold. I keep hearing, you know, Sam Darnold, man, you know, the guy's the guy's a good QB. In San Francisco, he's what got Trey Lance up out of there. After San Francisco spent an arm and a leg and then absolutely hit the jackpot with Brock Purdy. Because if Brock Purdy wouldn't have panned out, that would have been an absolute fail. But this is the same quarterback who down in Carolina was talking about he's seeing ghosts on the field. Same guy said that on a hot mic. I can't even say a hot mic. He was mic'd up when he said it. I'm seeing ghosts out there, man. Same guy. No, don't trust it at all. Panthers, we'll move on. We'll move on. The Saints, not intimidated at all. We're going to split with the Saints anyway. But this might be the year we just absolutely sweep them. Nothing about the Saints is intimidating to me. And I'm not saying this because I absolutely hate the Saints' guts. I hate everything about the Saints. I'm also a fair person. If the Saints had a good squad, I would tell y'all they have a good squad. I don't think that. Alvin Kamara is getting older, even though I like Alvin Kamara as a running back. I've never trusted Derek Carr. They got Slant Boy up out of the paint. But they do have Olave. Olave is a beast as a wide receiver. But I'm just, they don't have enough for me to be scared of. Then we got Tampa. We've already talked about Tampa, so we'll move on. Arizona, not intimidated at all. At all. And if Carson Palmer, uh, not Carson Palmer, uh, if, uh, what's your boy's name? Kyler Murray. If Kyler Murray goes down, y'all know that's an automatic L. Because we know what they back up capable of. We know what he capable of. Absolutely nothing right now. Then we go to the Rams. Rams. 
Fam, I'm not going to lie. I like the Rams. I like the Rams. Sneaky team last year. Should have won that playoff game. Should have very much won that playoff game. Puka Nakua was interfered with, and they, they didn't call that. That would have been a first down, and the game is over. Detroit should have never made it to the second round. Puka was destroying those boys. And they still got Cooper Cup. Cooper Cup wasn't 100% healthy last year. He's going to be healthy this year. And we know what Cooper Cup can do. So with this wide receiving uh, combination, wide receiver combination they got with Puka uh, and Cooper Cup, and they got a dog in Kyron Williams at running back, and they got Matthew Stafford. Hey, man, that's a good team. I'm not intimidated by him, though. I think Atlanta can beat that team. But that would be a good matchup. That would be a very, very good matchup. San Francisco, they got all the right things. But they showed that if one player goes down, one, they are more than vulnerable. Hell, when they were healthy, they were vulnerable. We saw what happened in the playoffs. And this happened at home. Green Bay came in there and almost beat them boys at home. Detroit had a 27-7 lead at home. And then we saw what happened in the, in, in the Super Bowl. We, we Listen, even though they have a good team, we still know who they coach by. And Kyle Shanahan will give up the cheeks at any given moment. Not intimidated by them, too. And then the Seahawks. They just let go of Pete Carroll. They're basically turning the page there in Seattle. So I don't even think Seattle's going to be competitive this year. Those are all the teams in the NFC, uh, in the NFC, all of them. Now, our basement is 10 wins. No matter if you've heard it from people that absolutely hate Kirk Cousins or love Kirk Cousins, the basement is 10 wins. How many of these teams in the NFC do you think are going to win 10, 10 games? Commanders aren't. Giants aren't. Cardinals aren't. Panthers aren't. I don't think the Seahawks will either. So let me just do it this way. I think San Francisco will probably win more. The Rams, I see them winning more than 10. Philly. And Dallas. I'm only putting Dallas there because Dallas has won 12 games the last three years consecutive so there but dallas is good for beating up on bad teams when they meet a team that's 500 or better they get scared they go in the closet and hide but when they're playing a trash team they put on the superhero cape come out of the closet and want to jump off the couch They want to body slam you on furniture when you're below 500. But if you're above 500, they upstairs taking a nap. So, yeah, man, I listen. I am a homer. I do love my team. But I'm also a realist. When we were playing like cheeks, I called that out. Fam, I'm off the porch. 13, 13 dubs. I'm off the porch. 13 of them. Now, the basement is 10. If we hit the basement, okay, whatever. I'm off the porch with 13. So if anybody wants to challenge my gangster when it comes to this team, 
I'm booking 13 before we even get to the draft. And don't let us hit the draft. Don't let us hit home runs in the draft, bro. 13 might go up. This is contingent on Kirk Cousins being being and staying healthy. If he plays the whole season, we win in 13. So let me get to some of these comments, fam, because I'm sorry. I had to go on my soliloquy. I got to start from the top. What's going on? Greg, formerly known as G. What's happening? Smitty, Mr. 10K himself. What's happening? Um, Keonis says, what's up, bro? Long time, my G. What's happening, Keonis? Uh, Maddie, what's happening? What's going on? Um, let me get down here. What's going on, Wallace? What's happening? George, what's what's going on with your fam? What's going on with you? Rob Bass. Rob Bass in the house. Uh, what's going on? What's happening? A1 Fab, what's going on, Chris? What's happening, man? What's happening? What's happening? Uh, Jay Lana says, uh, is he not a Falcons fan? Talking uh, about my father. No, he's not. My my father's not a the, the weird, the weird part about my parents. <laughs> I got a story time for y'all. And I shouldn't even be telling y'all this. Let me get to these comments and then we'll have a, st- a quick story time. Uh, Mills, what's happening? What's happening? What's going on, Anthony? What's happening with you, man? RJ just says, good night, Mark. What's going on? What's going on, man? Um, Josh says, Vegas has our win total at 10.5. Uh, that's high. They know something. Yeah, I mean, you can look at... Here, here's the thing. I'm looking at what's current right now and what was what was last year. Last year, 12 wins was the number one seed. And when I tell you none of these teams intimidate me, I'm being serious. Atlanta has the capability of beating every one of these teams. I'll go even further. They had the capability of beating any one of these teams last year. That's how we we underperformed so badly. Nobody thought we was getting beat by Arizona. Nobody thought we would get beat by Minnesota. Nobody. Those are two wins right there. Those are two losses. That gets us to nine wins. We went to bed on back-to-back weeks with those two, those two teams alone that had backup quarterbacks. Nobody had those teams winning. Just those two alone get you to nine. You got one more game to get to 10 with terrible quarterback play. Nate, what's happening, fam? What's happening? April, what's going on with you? What's going on with you? The check down. Says, what's up? Great show. Appreciate it, fam. Oh, I would be remiss. If you didn't catch my boy Ryan and the birdcage over there tonight, go over there. Check that out. Great show. They had a great interview. Ryan's doing some big things over there behind the scenes. Go over there, like, and subscribe that man's stuff, man. They, they're they chopping up premium game over there. Um, hey, your boy, Tidy. What's going on from the Atlanta Bird Gang? He says, I love the optimism, brother. I haven't been this sure of a, su- a successful Falcon season since 2017. Yeah, it's been a while. It has been a while, man. It, 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 it has been a while. What's going on, Antonio? What's happening? So let me tell y'all this story. (sighs) Okay. So my mom, I love my mom to death. I do. My mom knows absolutely nothing about football. She knows I'm, she knows I'm a diehard Falcons fan. That's about the extent of it. Me and my mom having a conversation a couple years back. And she was like, I don't know why you get so emotional about the Falcons. You don't get emotional about nothing else. Which she's telling the truth. Like watching a Falcons game, I will go through every emotion there is. Joy, elation, pain, stress, violence, 
anger, rage, tiredness. Like I go through, I go through ranges, <laughs> like the side effects of a new drug. Are you a diehard Falcons fan? Of course you are. Then, it, like the <laughs> the commercial will be showing me like in the park. It's real sunny outside. I got on a Falcons jersey. I'm throwing a football in slow motion, smiling, and then the side effects hit. May cause stress, loss of consciousness, rage, violence, zombie mode. I mean, all that stuff comes out because it's true. I digress. I went too far down back. So, I say, Mama, who's your football team? <sighs> it's almost embarrassing that I'm telling this story, but my mama don't know no better. My mom said, well, I have two teams. I root for the Atlanta Falcons and I root for the New Orleans Saints. The look I gave my mom was confusion and let me get back in this time machine and go back 15 seconds and ask this same question, which I did. I literally left the room, came back in 15 seconds like we had just rewound this conversation. I said, Mom, who's your favorite team? And she said, nigga, I said the Atlanta Falcons and the New Orleans Saints. I said, Mom, you know that don't even go together, right? That's like a peanut butter and tuna sandwich. That don't even make sense. Do you realize we are mortal enemies? Vampires and lichens. We're mortal enemies. How can you be a fan of both? And my mom was like, I just like what I like. <laughs> I said, Mama, don't ever let anybody know who your favorite teams are. Don't, don't ever let them know. Don't ever let them know. And I literally walked out that room. I had no more conversation. I didn't even want to understand why. And I'm like, this is the woman that raised me. Are you a fan of? I don't even know this woman, man. And most people think I'm exaggerating. I should call my mom right now and ask her the same question because she she ain't going to change. She'll tell you the Falcons and the Saints and don't know a lick about football. None. Because if she did, and I feel like I failed my mama. I feel like I failed her. All these conversations about how I hate the Saints. All of them. Uh, anyway so yeah I have two parents that absolutely they could care less about football if my father had to pick a team it would probably be the Cowboys which is even worse but that goes to show you how deep my fandom runs they know who my team is I will, man, I will talk about the Falcons and not even realize I'm talking to my parents. So I think, man, this is, this is the year. It's it, it to me, it's NFC championship. And it's been that way for like the last couple of weeks, man. Um, while people are talking about, they see us making the playoffs. I see us winning the NFC. I, I do think that they, now I will say this, there's going to be some competition. You're going to have San Francisco, that's going to be there. You're going to have Philly. That's going to be there. You're going to have Dallas that are going to be there competing for that top spot. But we know what Dallas does against 500 teams. So if I, if it ain't a one seed, a two is very possible.
And then depending on what we do in the draft, I still think we're going defensive end at eight. Terry has said this for the last three years. They pick the best guy on the board at that time. I think it's going to be defense. Just something's telling me it's going to be a defensive end. Something's telling me. Now, I've been accused of having insider information the last couple of years. I wish. I wish. Because if I get on the inside, they're paying me. But it's just patterns that I that I see, man. Um, and this is, I don't know. Let me let me look this up real quick. Uh, where? Da, da, da. Let me see. So. I'm going to see what's going on with Brandon Ayuk. Um, I, haven't, I haven't heard anything about Brandon Ayuk in God knows how long. So I don't know if he's inked a deal or. Um, so he's still in contract negotiations. Yeah, so nobody still knows what's going on with Brandon Ayuk. But I'll tell you, if they don't get Brandon Ayuk, that's a problem for San Francisco. To me, they fall out of competing for that number one, uh, that number one spot in, in the NFC. Uh, Todd says, Mark, we're fixing to lose uh, a first round pick. I'm telling you, Blank didn't help matters on his doubling down. Um, let me funny that you mentioned that funny that you mentioned that because I actually, I actually, hold on. I actually have that queued up. Um, so I haven't seen this interview. I, I heard about it today where people were saying that, yeah, you know, Arthur blank, came out here and said man he they didn't do anything wrong i don't think they're gonna lose a, a first round pick um it may be a third or a fourth i don't think it's gonna be a first we've seen things like this happen before i, I don't think i don't think we lose no, no first though um and plus like to me this isn't a secret like teams talk teams and players talk to each other all the time the proof that tampering exists is when it's uh, you're officially allowed to tamper that man you see these deals go down almost the minute they sound a horn five minutes later there's a deal being made so you mean to tell me these teams didn't talk at all? These players didn't talk to anybody? And within five minutes from not talking at all, they're on the phone making deals? Man, come on. I, that isn't even believable. You can't get a woman to decide what she's going to eat inside of five minutes. And when it comes to some guys, it takes longer for me to decide what shoes I'm wearing for the day. Man, there have been times I done put on a pair of sneakers, got halfway out the door, said, nah, uh -uh, this ain't it. Went back in the house and spent 10 minutes trying to figure out what shoes I'm going to wear. It takes me longer to decide what shoes I put on. So I know good and damn well, these guys who are running billion dollar companies, because that's what a football team is. It's a damn company. They're not making split 
split minute, split minute or split second decisions inside of five. They've been talking. They've been pillow talking too. And they got their different channels that they use. So let's see. Um, I don't know if this is him doubling down. This is on the Atlanta Falcons uh, page. I ain't going to ESPN or NFL because every time I do, fam, they they come for the channel. They come for your boy. So they they just waiting. They sitting there with the Birdman hand rubs like the minute on the mark tries to share something on it. We got his ass. We got you. So I ain't going that route. Uh, Falcons are a lot less lenient when it comes to that. But we'll we'll see what they're talking about. It's only five minutes and 41 seconds. Joined right now by the owner and chairman of the Atlanta Falcons, Arthur Blank. Mr. Blank, thank you very much Morning. for being here. You've had an exciting you. exciting uh, few weeks here. you got a very expensive quarterback who's going to be taking a lot of your money and hopefully providing <laughs> you a lot That's of true. wins here. Right. Uh, well, we've had a great, uh, great free agency. Um, I think we uh, accomplished what we wanted to. Um, we had some very specific goals during free agency that we wanted to get through. I think we were able to do that. Um, obviously, draft coming up. We'll fill in some more holes. And... Um, we had a young competitive team this last year, but, uh, you know, there's some things we had to do to get over that hump. And I think we put our position, ourselves in a position to do that. Obviously, it's a competitive division, the competitive league. Every Sunday, got to be your best. So uh, um, we're happy about where we are, but we're looking forward to our schedule, looking forward to playing games. So I don't think it was a secret that you guys were going to go after Kirk Cousins. I feel like everybody knew that. When did you, how did this transpire from your perspective? And when did you know, like, okay. No, everybody didn't know that. It, I'm going to play this again because I, I hate this 2020 hindsight. Shit. Nobody knew this. Nobody. Because literally when the Justin Field stuff um, was being talked about, everybody jumped on the Justin Fields bandwagon. Nobody knew. Nobody knew that they were going after Kirk Cousins. They didn't say anything until after that Justin Fields stuff came out. Then the next day, there was the report that came out about how, hold your horses, the Falcons are pursuing Kirk Cousins heavily. That was the first time publicly they had said anything about Kirk Cousins. So all this, we, we knew, no, you didn't. No, you didn't. About where we are, but we're looking forward to our schedule, looking forward to playing games. So I don't think it was a secret that you guys were going to go after Kirk Cousins. I feel like everybody knew that. When did you, how did this transpire from your perspective? And when did you know, like, okay, I think we might have this guy? Well, I think, you know, we were debating. I mean, we knew when we said this uh, postseason, immediately postseason, that a quarterback play had to get better uh, coming into this coming current season. And uh, there was a number of ways we could fill that and uh, still awesome combinations that we could consider. Um, but Kirk obviously has had an excellent career in the NFL, 12 years, two, uh, two six-year uh, runs with two uh, very good franchises and won a lot of games. And we thought in terms of free agency, he was the best answer for us. Um, I think that uh, our general manager continued to work with uh, folks at Minnesota and uh, the agent, I should say, and um, for, for Kirk. And um, I think as we got down to the last couple of days, it became clear that it was going to be very competitive and that, um, you know, we, we wanted uh, to have a positive solution for this issue, this problem that we had. Well, Terry, I did. I, I did say that. <laughs> I, listen, man, I don't have insider information. It's just for me. Even before the season started, just looking at uh, comparables, because that's what I usually do. You have people that are very brilliant when it comes to the college game uh, that look at players and they're able to assess um, certain players. And I respect them for that. On the pro level, that's where I'm at. So I can tell by guys preseason what he's going to be and what he isn't going to be. I can tell if he's got a motor. Um, I can tell if there's some mechanics going on with him in the preseason. Because remember, if you get a rookie that comes in and plays games in the preseason, he's not playing college players. He's playing pros. 
you know, whether they're second, third year or whatever the case may be. So that's what I look at. When I looked at Desmond Ritter, there was some some things mechanically that was off about him. Period. But I was like, look, if this man can play to to Kirk Cousins stats. We'd be all right. And then the, the very same year, Kirk Cousins goes nuclear as far as what he starts doing out there um, out there in Minnesota. So I'm seeing what I'm seeing from a quarterback is what I think anybody should see. Touchdown to interception ratio. I'm seeing 18-5. And I'm like, what the, huh? Kirk? And Kirk is always bald. But what made it even more crazy is he was doing this for a lot of games without his number one target in Justin Jefferson, who you can argue is one of, if not the best wide receivers in the game. And he was turning a rookie wide receiver, Addison, into an absolute stud. Then I looked at the passer yardage. I'm like, this man is behind Tua. And mind you, Minnesota started out on a losing streak. But Kirk was still putting up numbers. So I'm like, man, I'm going to take a poke at that, bro. I don't care if he's got an Achilles tear. I'm looking at 18-5. And his 12th, I think 12th, 13th season, 18-5. This is what I wanted Desmond Ritter to play like. So fuck Desmond. Let's see if we can go get, <laughs> we can go get Kirk. And that's what ended up happening. So. Again, that's how I kind of analyze things on the pro level. When it comes to the college level, yeah, y'all can slap me around about that. I, hey, there's plenty of very versed uh, folk in the Falcons fan base that will run circles around me on the college level when it comes to these pros, though. Because, I, again, I watch as many games as I can. So I'm a diehard Falcon fan at heart. But family, when I tell you, when the when football comes back, it's like I have another full-time job. I watch games from basically 12 until 1130. And sometimes with the pair, you know, the Paris games and stuff, when they start playing the, the London games, they start playing at 9 o'clock. Bro, I'm up from 9 to 11 watching nothing but football. And the games that I didn't catch, I will catch those during the week. So when it comes to the pro level, I'm looking at a lot of guys and I'm like, okay, this guy's got it. This guy doesn't. This guy can't run routes. He's got good hands, but he cannot run routes. Or this guy has good hands, but all he does is run slants. Or a quarterback, a quarterback is afraid to throw the slant, afraid to throw the post, you know, or a corner. Corner gets fooled by a double move every time. I'm looking at stuff like that in the pros. So when it comes to who we get, I'm looking at a pro level. So anyway, let's continue. We had this hole that we had without a without a uh, a playmaker in that position. It's hard to win in this league. It's tough to win under any circumstances, but particularly without, you know, a, a really qualified quarterback. And we think we got one in Kirk. And, uh, um, you know, we made a big investment, but we're happy to do that. We're about championships, about winning. And, um, and that's our, you know, that's our responsibility to our fan base. For a guy like Kirk at this point in his career, you, you want to hit the ground running, right? He's, I mean, right. he's in the prime of his career right now. And I'm just watching him when he was at his press conference and yep. some of the behind the scenes footage. I'm watching. I said, it looks like he's been there forever. It was his first day yeah. in the facility. Yeah. Yeah. Did you, did you yeah. get that, that vibe with him? Well, I, I think uh, I, mean, I think he feels very comfortable. I mean, I think he's uh, he's a very, very mature young man. Uh, I didn't know him before I watched his press conference. I was out of town when he did it, but um, I was very impressed with the way he responds to the questions. He was very thorough, very thoughtful, um, answered every question, um, has been great in terms of connections to our staff and uh, uh, been connected to uh, probably all of our players by now and, and uh, ready to come in and get to work. And uh, uh, from a medical standpoint, he feels good. His Achilles is behind him. Uh, he's got some healing yet to do, but he's in a good place with that. Um, and looking forward to, uh, you know, to getting on the field. He understands that the NFL is about winning, and um, as we all do, and he understands the challenge of that. But he's, uh, he's got a great coaching staff to work with. We're thrilled with Raheem and, and uh, the coordinators. I was 
keep kidding uh, Stan Kroenke and Sean McVay and Les Snead. We got half their staff is now living in <laughs> Atlanta now. But um, but I said to Sean, listen, you're from Atlanta. That can't be bad. <laughs> but that really, to their credit, and I will say this, uh, said this to them privately, said publicly, is that Sean has developed really his own train of sense. I mean, the fact that so many coaches are coming out of uh, out of that situation with the Rams is speaks well to him, speaks well to Les, speaks well for Stan as an owner. So um, we've got an excellent coaching staff now, some of which we've retained, some which we've brought from a variety of other teams. So we're in a good place and ready to play ball. Arthur, last thing for you. We appreciate yeah. your time here. I remember interviewing you backstage before the Super Bowl that week, back after the 2015 uh-huh. season. We all know how that game ended. As an owner, to come that mm-hmm. close – to have the changes you've had since, yeah. how much does it burn inside you every day to get another opportunity to hoist that Lombardi Trophy? Well, I don't, you know, I don't know that it burns inside of me every single day, every moment. It'd be, you know, a good soundbite. But I mean, it does. You know, I mean, I, I feel like my responsibility as an owner to our fans, um, to the players, to the coaches, is to make sure we're as competitive as we can be every single year. Uh, to make sure that we have an opportunity to uh, to get into the tournament, get into the playoffs. We understand a single-game elimination. Anything can happen. Uh, we'd love to get back to the Super Bowl and have a chance to win. Uh, and really win for uh, for our fan base that's been uh, supportive of Atlanta since 1966. And it's a great fan base. And uh, they filled Mercedes-Benz Stadium beautifully for us, uh, for football and for soccer as well, and for virtually every other event we have there. But uh, – uh, so I'm, I'm anxious to do that, but we got to take it one step at a time, and we got to just get ourselves in a position where we can, uh, where we competing for that. And uh, and I think we're in a position now. Where we're definitely a more competitive team than we were a year ago. Arthur, thanks so much for the time. Really Thank appreciate you. Being Thank you. Okay, so they they didn't ask him about that. So I'm, I'll probably save that for another time and day. But you know, if he doubled down on it, man, that's what he's supposed to do. You know. He, he's supposed to double down on it. You don't want to just come out and say, yeah, I, I tampered. So what? So what? I tell you, no, nah, you're not. Because if you do that, then the NFL go, NFL going to get in your ass at, at that point. Then it's like, yeah, you know what? We we need to make an example out of uh, we're going to make an example out of his ass. Uh, so, yeah, you're supposed to double down. Man, listen, if y'all ain't got no smoking gun, I'm doubling down, too. Man. What are you talking about? Like, nah, we didn't. We uh, I don't know what you're talking about. Knowing I was on the phone from sun up to sundown before the tampering period to make sure that that deal was in place. I don't know what you're talking about. You know, it's this commercial. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever seen this commercial, but it's a, um, it's like a a roach spray commercial or something like that, where they had this man dressed up in a roach costume eating Cheez-Its and the woman who owns the apartment she's staring at him and she's like I hate you and he looks at her he's like prove it that's how I am you gotta prove everything but behind the scenes man, we, we've been talking to him since November we've been man listen soon as he tore his Achilles I'm on the horn how you feeling? I'm, I'm feeling good, man. Yeah, man, that was a bad play right there, man. That's, you know, I'm just, I'm checking in on you, man. How, how's your contract negotiation? Well, I don't know, man. They don't, they don't really want to give me any guaranteed money. Say less, say less. Uh, so, um, yeah, we'll be hollering at you though. J- just, you know, I'll check in on you every other week. See how you're doing. Ask you about your contract extension. That's that's code for we want you. Yeah, I'm tampering. Everybody tampers in the... I don't even know why they had that fucking rule in there, honestly. Because every team breaks it. Every single team breaks it. And they proved it on March 11th. All these deals that just came flying out of nowhere. Family, they been talking. So I don't think they taking the first round. Eh? Third or fourth at best. We we got to slap you a little bit. It's not going to be the Chris Rock slap. 
it's gonna be the slap when you were in Paris and the guy tried to kiss you. It's, it's gonna be one of those taps. Third, third or fourth round. Matter of fact, we'll make it a fifth round. We'll make it a fifth. I'm not really worried about it, to be honest. But inside of two years, I think Atlanta's hoisting that trophy. This year, we went in 13. Now, a couple years ago, I was dead accurate with seven wins. So, I was off last year because I was like, 10 wins should be the move. And then this team just utterly embarrassed themselves. But the one thing you have to realize about a guy like Kirk Cousins, he does not have messed up fundamentals that Desmond Ritter has. You know, Desmond Ritter's, you know, foot placement when he throws the ball, his decision making. Des got a lot of things to work on as, as a quarterback. Kirk don't have none of those things. You can ask guys like Stefan Diggs, Adam Thielen, Justin Jefferson. You can ask guys like that. Kirk going to get the ball to you. I've seen Kirk Cousins stare a guy down and still get the ball to him. And y'all know that's a no-no for a quarterback. Didn't look any other way. I got you. From the start of the route to the throw. Still delivered it to the boy. So, again, man, I, I do think it's low-key disrespectful for them to be talking about we're just a playoff team. No. We get in the playoffs, we're going to be a problem. I ain't even talked about our running backs. I'm an hour and nine in. I ain't even talked about Bijan. I ain't even talked about Tyler Algier. I, oh, boy, I would have, man, if I was the OC, I would have a field day with this team. I would have a field day. I'm emotion you to death. Y'all gonna get tired of seeing guys run behind that line. I'm motion in every play. But ooh. Just thinking about it just puts a smile on my face, man. If Zach Robinson is any proof that Sean McVay is that guy. Because we saw what happened up in up in Minnesota. That coach came from that McVay tree. And the reason, let me let me pull up something here. <sighs> so last year. The Vikings were seven and ten, right? They had won four games with Kirk Cousins. Um, and it looked like they were gonna start making some noise before he got hurt. But I want to put something up here on the screen before your boy gets up out of this piece. I want y'all to look at that number right there. Take a minute and look at that right there. Now, your boy jumped off the porch with 13 wins. This was the first year Kevin O'Connell was the head coach. Just going to leave that right there for a second. And who is his quarterback? I 
I want y'all to pay attention to that whole NFC North record because that's what the NFC South is going to look like next year. If I'm a betting man, I think Tampa wins nine games. I think the Saints win about seven or eight games. Now, I, I think Carolina will win about four or five. And, and maybe, mm, mm, I'm going to cut Carolina some slack. I think Carolina will probably win five. Outside of that, that record that you see right there. I think is going to be the exact identical record in the NFC South next year. I'm jumping off the porch a lot tonight. And I could be dead wrong. Next year, if this don't happen, your boy be on here eating crow with some honey mustard sauce on it. I got no problem. But I'm looking at Kevin O'Connell being the offensive coordinator when he, the minute he gets a job, and mind you, he's calling the plays over there. They win 13 games. With Kirk Cousins. We got Raheem Morris. Who's just leaving that tree. We got Zach Robinson. Who's just leaving that tree. And people telling me Atlanta's just, they're just gonna make the playoffs or it's its in play between Atlanta and, and Tampa. It's not in play. Atlanta's winning the NFC South next year. You can book it. Outside of Kirk Cousins getting hurt. If Kirk Cousins is healthy, we're winning the NFC South. I, man, you know what? Not to, not to really bash Tampa. I think Tampa overachieved last year. It wouldn't shock me if Tampa actually took a step back. But I'll I'll still give Tampa the benefit of the doubt. Seth says 8-1 at home is crazy. Yeah, they were that deal in 2022. And this is what a guy people say can't can't win. But anyway, fam, your boy is out of here. I just wanted to jump off the porch and document this. Now, if I follow my face next year, y'all can come back and be like, hey, Mark, you remember when you jumped off the porch? Buddy, we won nine games this year. Hey. I will get back up here and I, hey, your boy, your boy face planted. But fam, I didn't come by that nickname by mistake. Uh, Todd says, who's sacking the quarterback mark if we went into it all? Just asking. Well, we had 40 plus sacks last year with no pass rusher. Jay Lang says, I mean, this video not going. Yeah, it ain't going nowhere. It is not going anywhere. Matter of fact, I will. What's today's date? Today's date is the. Uh, 28th. Oh, shit. I got a oh, 27th. OK, so I'm going to go ahead and document this on my phone. I'm going to highlight it on my phone. We're going we gonna to be back here at the end of uh, next season when the playoffs start. And we're going to go through this video again. I'm either going to be Negro Damas. I'm going to be sitting here like, what the fuck was I thinking then? Now, again, there are restrictions on this. Kirk Cousins has to play the entire year. He can't get hurt. If he gets hurt, all bets are off, like any NFL team. We saw that happen with the Jets. Three plays in, their whole season is over with. If 
your boy, if your boy is healthy, 13, book it. Terry said, I've been losing so much money on my Falcons. It better turn around this year or I'm going to turn into ghost from power. <laughs> hey, funny. Let, since I'm jumping off the porch, I'll jump off the porch with that. Damn. If you're watching book two, it's in its final season. I'm not only am I jumping off the porch, I'm jumping off the porch with car keys in my hands and I'm going to the convenience store. Ghost is still alive. And Ghost is going to show up in this season of Book Two Power. Y'all can book it. I'm, I'm off the porch today. I'm off porch today. Falcons are going, they're, they're winning 13 and Ghost is coming back in Power Book Two. Now, both these things happen, fam. I'm telling you, these lottery numbers are inbound. If both these things happen, I'm hitting the lottery next year. I'm hitting it this year. Speaking of which, I do need to... Oh, well, shit, it's too late. It's 1054. Um, I think Mega Millions got back up there with uh, at a billion or something like that. Um, one time for a fan says, I see the Falcons with 10 plus wins this season. Yeah, definitely. Anything below 10, honestly, is a fail. It, it's a fail. And I, I hate to say that because Raheem Morris should be given the same amount of rope that we gave Arthur Smith. The problem is... You have a ready-to-win roster, and you just paid a quarterback $180 million. So, unfortunately, the win total can't be seven. That's a failure. Anything below 10 is a failure. Because 10 is your, your basement. That's that's your minimum. Um, Jay Lana says, I can see that with that being it's the last season. It's definitely possible. Here, here's why. Here's why I think Ghost never died. One, if y'all watch Power, y'all know. If not, it, and it extends past Power. Raising Canaan also, if you do not see a body, that character's still living. Everybody that died in Power, OG Power, we saw a body. We saw them at the morgue. We never saw a ghost. One time for a fan says I'm lost because because I never hey well let me shut up there because I'm I'm I was about to give up the whole the whole draws talking about power but I will say this I think Ghost is still in so if Ghost comes back in book uh, in in the final season of book two and we win 13 games family y'all know why I got the name but if not we coming back. This is going to be my crow video. I'm coming back like Brandon Lee. And we're going to go, we're going to dissect this video, family. <laughs> and while we're dissecting it, I will be eating crow with honey mustard sauce the whole entire time. But outside of that, man, your boy is up out of here. I hope y'all have a great rest of the week, man. Y'all stay safe out there. And we're always standing on Loco business around here so when anybody asks you about us you tell them we stand on logo business boy up out of here fam Peace.